Welcome to this new series called Shortwave Past and Present, where I will talk about different things about stations that I've heard over time, and even stations I might not have any QSLs or info, I will still actually talk about, you know, stations that were on the air in the past and give a little bit of reference on them. Uh, this will be in a playlist, so you can, of course, check the playlist and let it just play and listen to the different stories that I'll have. A lot of stories from QSL cars that I own, and of course, a lot of stories of uh, shortwave uh, fun from the good old days. And of course, there'll be some stuff from you know recent times. So even if you have not been listening to shortwave for a long time, going to be a lot of stuff in here. Today we feature Radio Norway International, and let's start our little exploration and the stories I have with Radio Norway. Dette er Norge. This is Radio Norway International. International. Dette er Norge. Etter en halvtimes program på engelsk sender vi søndagens gudstjeneste. This is Radio Norway International broadcasting to the Far East and New Zealand on 15.225 MHz, to Australia on 17.81 and to Europe on 9.59 MHz. <tryk> And so Radio Norway International, a station that was broadcasting in English only on Sundays, which was very unique for a shortwave broadcaster. Radio Norway's shortwave signal started in 1948, and unfortunately, the service was discontinued on January 1st, 2002, and all of Norway's broadcasting activities on shortwave ceased on January the 1st, 2004. The QSLs you see here, uh, four of them, are QSL cars that I've got in the 80s when I started listening to shortwave. Now, I was a teenager, and you know, one of the things that was always fun is to hear a new station. I gotta say, was very, very excited the first time I've heard Radio Norway. The interval signal that you heard before is uh, something that was very soothing, very relaxing. And I remember being so happy to receive one of the Nordic countries. Um, you know, Radio Finland, Radio Norway, Radio Sweden were three stations I was always chasing. And of course, stories behind these QSLs is that not only am I writing to a station that I'm receiving, uh, possibly for the first time, as you see here, this one is uh, uh, 9th of October, 1983. And I believe this is my first ever QSL card from Radio Norway back in the day. Uh, 1983 was a big year for QSLs for me because it was the first year that I was really actively searching for writing to stations and getting QSL cards. And uh, one of the stories behind Radio Norway for me was um, I remember having a job that I was kind of bored and always wanted, you know, one of those jobs that you want to just go for the weekend and you can't wait for it. And at that day, um, at that time, you know, the weekend for me was mostly shortwave radio and, and, and big part. It was a lot of fun. Um, school time also, you know. I mean, I was one of the guys that, you know, I didn't hate school. But, you know, the weekends is the weekend and you do what you want. And I turn off that, turn on that radio and, and listen to stations. And Radio Norway was my Sunday listening experience. Uh, you guys know that I am a part, the excerpt part, shortwave listener. For me, Radio Norway was kind of a DXing um, thing because even though it was powerful, they had their 500 kilowatt transmitters. Uh, still, it was a lot of fun to hear a Nordic country like Radio Norway. 
So you see here a very high frequency of 17855 on uh, April 22nd, 1984. I mean, we're in April of 2022 right now, so 38 years ago. Amazing. And, of course, uh, the first QSL series that I had from Radio Norway were mostly um, these, you know, um, national costumes uh, and, and seeing that. Uh, I always found it interesting that stations would send out QSL cards showing, you know, kind of national costumes that, that were in the old days. I mean, people obviously didn't wear that every day. Uh, but, you know, you get that, you're a teenager, and you're like, wow, this is, okay, this is interesting, traditional costumes of Norway, you know. This one, 14305. Unfortunately, there's no times. It'd be fun to have the UTC time I was listening to those stations. Uh, so Radio Norway, one of my favorites for the day, and uh, definitely a station that I would uh, look for. Uh, it is missed. I loved listening to Radio Norway. The programs were, of course, diverse of all sorts. Uh, lots of news and lots of info about Norwegian life and, uh, you know, uh, traditional uh, Norwegian uh, programming. And, and, and like at many shortwave stations also, you know, kind of having their own take on the events, especially back then of the Cold War and then into the 90s. And uh, early 2000s, I believe I have a QSL somewhere here from Radio Norway from when I lived, when I started living here. Well, we'll have to uh, find at some point. So this was the highlight of Rain in Norway. The stories behind it, based on my listening experience and the QSL cards. I hope you'll like, you like this series. There will be a lot of videos. Some will not have a lot of QSL. Some will have only one. But there will be stories behind them and things that, uh, memories that go with it that I remember, uh, you know, feelings of the times and so on. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, if you do, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for watching our videos.